If you've seen my 3DS is awesome in 2024, 2025 video, then you have a really good idea on what you can do with a modded 3DS and the sheer volume of capabilities you unlock with the 3DS when you mod it, such as the Super Mario 64 port or playing Virtual Boy in actual 3D or playing 64 games even on a new 3DS, let alone the massive 3DS library that is now largely inaccessible. This particular 3DS was provided to me by redproclub.com, which comes pre-modded and preloaded with a bunch of games. But a number of you noted in the comments that, to be fair to all, I should provide my own guide on how to mod the 3DS in 2025 so that absolutely everyone can enjoy those benefits. And you're completely right, so let's get hacking. So first off, your source of truth should always be 3ds.hacks.guide, which has the latest and greatest steps for modding every kind of 3DS. And so if we scroll down here, it'll give you some information about custom firmware and what does this guide cover. We'll just continue on to key information. And indeed, all 3DSs are covered, which is perfect. Or rather, except for the families of the DSi family, which have their own guide, which is dsi.cfw.guide. So if you're a DSi guy this year, Hey, you're covered. And as you can see, they just go into a lot of depth. If you really want to read up on absolutely everything, you can get updated on the terminology. You can get recommendations on how to properly extract a zip file. So if you just are coming into this and you're a little timid or I move a little fast, I've been told I talk fast, then you can just hop into here and really take your time with this guide. But I'm gonna jump forward to the meat of it just for sake of those who might want a bit of a faster pace. So I'm gonna hop over to the get started here. And section one is custom firmware check. And so if we power off our console, which I will do right now, what it tells us to do is to hold down select while we boot up the 3DS. And I get this screen, which is exactly what you'll wanna see if you think you already have custom firmware. And so it says right here, if you see the Luma 3DS configuration screen or any other custom menu, such as Godmode 9 or Decrypt 9 Whip, stop, you already have custom firmware, continue from here. And that is a whole different section of the guide, which says that if you have any of these particular versions of Luma 3DS, then you should proceed with for this upgrade path, or if it's version eight or greater, then you can just look at doing a general update because you don't have something with breaking changes. So in my case, I'm on 13.1.2, which is pretty recent. But for most of you following this guide, you are not gonna see this screen. And so we are just going to go ahead and save and exit. Because most of you, when you hold down select, won't see a thing and we'll just have the regular home menu boot up. And so we can go back to our regular steps here. And the next thing it tells us to check is to check our system version, which is quite important because the exploit that's used to get the custom firmware into the 3DS will depend on what version of the 3DS operating system you already have installed. All right, so we'll hop into the settings and we'll take note of our system version here. And then on the guide, we'll go ahead and check what 3DS we have. In my case, I have a new 3DS. And then I will punch in my firmware, which is 11.17.0-50 firm. And then it tells me, great, you should install boot nine strap. And first choose your operating system. I'm gonna choose Windows. And what you need, you need the latest version of boot nine strap, also referred to as MSET9. And so I'll go ahead and open that in a new tab. And then any 3.x version of Python installed in your computer. If you're using Windows, Python from the Microsoft Store cannot be used. You're telling me the Microsoft Store version of Python has plagued me many a time. So please install a version from python.org. I agree. And so we'll scroll on down here. First, I'll actually just grab that release from the GitHub. And so MSET 9 2.0, fresh edition, yep, boom. Let's grab this zip here from the assets, save that so we have it for later, that's great. So section one prep work in this section will prepare the MSET 9 exploit by temporarily creating a new home menu profile with no user data and then setting up that profile with only minimum data required by the MSET to trigger and your existing user will disappear, but it will come back when you're finished with this page. So now we'll go ahead and power off our 3DS when it's ready. It always takes a while for the 3DS to get out of the settings menu, whether back to home or turning off. It doesn't really like it going in there. So now, if you're on a regular old 3DS, then you just have that panel on the side where you just pop it out. If you're on a new 3DS XL, it is under the shell. Thankfully, I've got my LTT Precision Screwdriver set. Not a sponsor, however, they did send it over in a roundabout way. Really appreciate it. So thanks, LTT team. Keep up the awesome work with the awesome screwdriver set. But we'll just take off these screws on the back shell here and remove the stylus. Yes, I cracked it, but it's an aftermarket shell, so Pressure is much lower. You just slide it down. There's a little notchy notch there. One notch. Goodness gracious. There we go. It slides, does it not? 
<laughs> There's the slide. There was a slide involved, just a dicky slide is all. And all that for there. There's the micro SD, so now I'm rocking a 128 gig SanDisk Ultra. Come hither. There we go. All right, so let's put that in our computer. My desktop micro SD card reader is super fancy. It is a TELUS SD card reader that I got free with my flip phone way back in the day. And there's this random SD card adapter. So they're professional. <laughs> For the sake of this video, it's, I'll put this blank SD card in here so that way it'll appear more unmodded and we can take a look together. So uh, we've got my blank SD card now. So now we'll take contents of the MSET9 v2.zip, put that in here. Excellent. And now our batch file should like us. We're gonna go. Um, I'm gonna enter my firmware was 11.17, was it not? <laughs> it's a test. I didn't realize I should have written that down. All right, cool. So I'm gonna enter to input one of these numbers using new 3DS. Yeah, excellent. Type one and press enter again to be in the process of creating the mset ID one. All right, you'll see the message. Press enter again. Yes, this is the warning. So I'm gonna press one to confirm that I am cool with that. Created hacked ID one. Sick. Hacking in progress. <laughs> so we've closed that. Now we can eject our SD card. Put it back in the 3DS. 3DS will appear to have no data. This is expected. Your data will come back at a later step. Cool beans. And then we are apparently gonna go into the Me Maker. Is that where we put the exploit? That's cool. I love finding out where the exploits were hidden. Wait for your console to reach the Welcome to Me Maker screen, then exit to the home screen. Oh, that's it, eh? We got there. So something just happened in the background. We wouldn't just be asked to open Me Maker for no reason, obviously. Launch system settings and navigate to data management. Nintendo 3DS software and then we are going to press reset it says this will not wipe any of your data cool reset complete and then we will power off your console by pressing the power off button and then tapping the power off button on the lower screen and then we're going to put this guy back into our computer when we've safely shut it down power off give me that sd bing bong of windows telling us we've got a flash drive again what are we going to do with it double click the batch script again I believe this batch script is running off of Python, by the way. So if you don't have Python, just go to python.org and go to downloads and download the latest Windows version there. So we'll run our batch script for Windows. We'll hit two for my 3DS. It should display ready. Ooh, it does, exciting. So just making sure that you are properly ready. If Windows says not ready, then resolve issues and come back. Oh, we are good, so we can just press zero to exit and put this back on our console. Let's do that. Lots of uh, PC to console because of some recent updates that Nintendo made on their way out of the 3DS lifecycle. They decided to make it a little extra hard to exploit, but not to worry, it is still exploitable as you see. So we're gonna power on console, ensuring system settings is selected. So go to system settings, press A to launch it. Navigate to data management. Nintendo 3DS, extra data. We see Me Maker. Do not press any buttons or touch the screen. With the console still on and without pressing any buttons or touching the screen, remove your SD card from the console. The menu will refresh and say no SD card is inserted. We're just gonna chill here. I'm gonna take a look at this image. Me Maker, you should be seeing exactly that. Ooh. So touch nothing. I'm just gonna pull this guy right out of the console. No micro SD card found. SD card has been pulled. Back into the computer you go. Interesting, so we wanted it in like half state. We'll open up the Windows script again. Number two, we're going to type three to inject mset9. Cool. This is the exciting part. This is where we see successfully injected. Press enter to exit. And then we're going to reinsert the SD card into the console without pressing a button or touching the screen. And it should exploit while it's rereading the card. I see. Let's safely eject the card. Carefully not pressing any buttons. We're still good. Worried about the power button down there, so I'm just gonna angle it like this. There she goes. That's a cool exploit. Now, card all checks pass and still status. All right, cool. So I booted into safe B9S installer. Yes, we have. There he is. If you get a red screen or the console gets stuck on a loading screen, follow the troubleshooting guide. So we are now gonna install boot nine strap. When prompted, input the key combo given on the top of the screen to install boot nine strap. Now, mine might not give me that because I already had a modded 3DS, so we will see. The step on the lower screen has red colored text and you're not prompted to input a key combo, follow the description guide. So it looks like that's as far as mine will go since it already has boot nine strap installed, but I have had it before. But when I originally installed it, you did get a key combo up top, you can press like A, B, X, Y, left, right, something, something. And so after you follow that key combo and then press A and then you'll reboot the console 
and then you should be booted into the Luma 3DS configuration menu. So what we'll do right now is we'll just power this guy down. And so after you press A to reboot, it should reboot into the Luma bootloader. So I can just trigger that by holding down select and you should see something like this, which is great. Um, like it says in the guide there, these are pretty helpful settings that you might need at some point, but for now, leave them as they are. And I'm just gonna press start to uh, save and continue, or save and exit. And then section four is to remove MSET9, uh, which uh, by doing so, will prevent further issues and restore our user games and data and all that good stuff. So it says, do not skip this section. If you skip it, applications may crash. So definitely wanna do this. So we are going to power off the console and take our SD card out yet again. In my case, I see no difference because I'm on a different SD card than when I started, but you'll probably be like, that's great that I'm modded, but where'd all my stuff go? And so now we want to remove MSET9, the exploit. So we'll pop this guy back into our computer. My golly SD card, open up the bat file. I am number two. I'm guessing we're gonna use four remove trigger files since it shows that we are already injected. Yes, indeed, it shows we are injected. Type four to remove trigger file, and then type five to remove MSET nine, and then enter to close the script. Out of four to remove trigger file, done. Five to remove MSET nine, done. Enter to exit, bang. Very cool. At this point, your console will boot into Luma 3DS by default. If Luma 3DS does not look any different from the normal home menu, if your console has booted into the home menu, it is running custom firmware. Wonderful. Now we'll install some homebrew applications to complete your setup. So we'll safely inject our SD here. But as you might be gleaning from the verbiage there, they're saying, you done, bud, you hacked. Now you can move on to the fun stuff, like playing with it. We'll boot it up, remove MSET, and instead of moving it into our bootloader, uh, it should be booting right into Luma 3DS, which like it said, will look exactly like the regular 3DS menu, just it will be way more useful and you can do a lot more with it. And there we go. So this is what you should be seeing when you boot up your 3DS this next time after you've removed the exploit from the SD card, you should see your original user data, your profile info, that kind of thing, boot it all up into Luma. So now we'll head over to finalizing the setup and it says on the previous page, you installed boot nine strap, a custom firmware loader that loads up Luma. And on this page, we make some critical system file backups and install some homebrew programs. Most of these steps will be automated through using a script you will run on your console. That's nice. The script will install the following applications. FBI, super useful for installing PIA applications that install certain things. Homebrew Launcher Loader, uh, an ME 3DS, which is the theme loader that's loaded in the theme you're seeing right now. Checkpoint for managing 3DS and DS save game data. FTPD for wirelessly managing the files on your 3DS from your computer over FTP. Universal Updater, which is an app for downloading Homebrew over Wi-Fi and God Mode 9, a multipurpose tool for extracting data from internal memory or cartridges. So all that is like, yeah, really super critical like starter stuff. So I love that there's a script that does that now all in one. What you will need, xfinalizehelper.firm and finalize.romfs. And so you'll copy finalize.romfs to the root of your SD card, open the Luma folder in your SD card and create a folder called payloads and copy xfinalizerhelper.firm to payloads. In this section, you'll update your system to the latest version, which is safe to do with custom firmware. Update your console going to system settings, other settings, and system updates. Updates while using uh, B9S plus Luma are safe. The updater may display a message saying your system is up to date instead of updating. This is normal. Yeah, it's worth noting that yeah, when you are updated in firmware, you can go ahead and install 3DS updates. Obviously consult 3ds.hacks.guide, but they're like, you've got the latest stuff, so you can go into settings, other settings, we're here to system update and fire one in. I don't think I'm on Wi-Fi right now, but, but you could totally do that apparently, which is super nice, especially for certain games that want to see that. Section three, you can set up RTC, which is a real-time clock sync. You can also dump the sound firmware, which is necessary for some homebrew software to use sound properly. And in section four, we'll use that setup script, which you can activate by holding X while powering on your console, which will launch the finalizing setup helper. It'll boot into God Mode 9. You can then in the future access God Mode 9 by holding start while powering on the console. If you are prompted to create an essential files backup, press A to do so and A to continue once completed. If you're prompted to do the RTC in time, press A to do so, A to continue, press home, bring the action menu, select scripts and finalize. Follow the prompts in the script. Yeah, from here, yeah, just all the step-by-step -step instructions, but once you have that script on your 3DS and you've booted up with X and you fired it up, then it looks like it will tackle uh, the NAND backup for you, which you should copy into a safe location because that is a NAND backup of basically the core uh, essence uh, operating system slash critical files of your 3DS, so definitely back that up. 
Uh, looks like it'll back it up to GM9 slash backups. And then yeah, the script will also install the critical stuff in here. Like it'll install FBI and Universal Updater and Anemone Checkpoint and FTPD. So that is super slick. I love that they added that to the steps there. That wasn't there when I uh, last manually modded a 3DS. And then at the end of the guide here, they have some just kind of helpful tips on all your kind of shortcuts and things. Uh, this is interesting. I don't know if I've ever used the Rosalina menu, but pressing left shoulder, down D-pad select. Oh, I don't know that I've actually used this menu before, but from here, yeah, you can take screenshot, change brightness, enable cheats, plug and loader, debugger options, system config, screen filters, new 3DS menu, miscellaneous options. Wow, well, that's just a handy thing that I don't think I ever noted was in here. You can set the clock rate. Overclocking, <laughs> oh, well, super good to know. Um, so if you're playing like 64 games, you can overclock, did not know that. That tip did not make it into the 3DS is awesome video, so that's cool. <laughs> but yeah, all went well. You should now have a modded 3DS, either original 2DS or new 2DS XL, new 3DS. If you wanna see all the various types and why they're named that way, you should check out the kind of odd video I did where I told the story of all the 3DSs now as if it were a children's book. Kind of a weird one, but maybe you'll like it. And now that you have a shiny modded 3DS, you should definitely check out my 3DS is awesome in 2025 video, which will show you how to install and uh, mess around with and configure a lot, if not all of the stuff you see on my 3DS here, because I'm pretty sure I covered almost all of it in that video. It is a dense boy and YouTube seems to think people really like it. So you probably will too. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to help out the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.